close your eyes and imagine. Serial number 1899. What do you mean, game over? I was just getting started. Must be getting rusty like everything else around here. You know, I remember these guys for the first time around. They were amazing, astonishing, scientific miracles which seemed to pop up in every street corner. The things they could do seemed nothing short of magical. Not even in our wildest dreams could we have foreseen what was to come. The explosion of the technological advancement which would change the face of the world forever. Until in a few short years, what we looked on was shock and all would seem, well, just so much junk. It takes a special kind of visionary mind to see into the future, to stand in Einstein's immortal phrase, on the shoulders of giants, and see what lies ahead. More than that, it takes courage. When you look into the future, you may not like what you see. One man with the right stuff is David Morgan great scientist and the subject of our story never heard of him well you will in time David, David Morgan, can you hear me? Just a minute. There, try it now. What is the point? Nothing's gonna happen. Go on, push the button. I have pushed the button, David, about a hundred times. You gotta face facts, your machine doesn't work. It will now. I sorted out the problem, honestly. And what was the problem? A glitch in the programming, you wouldn't understand. I have taught science at the school for the past 12 years, David, and I think I can say that I've picked up a thing or two in that time. Well, I had the chronology set on an x-axis rather than a y-axis, so I was actually reversing the quantum values every time I turned it on the hyperspace drive. All right, mister. No one's denying you're a boy wonder when it comes to mathematics. But you are failing in your other subjects, and don't think I haven't noticed. Trying to impress me, staying behind every day to work on your gizmo? Tasmo, time and space modulator. Gizmo, Tasmo. Please, Miss Jemison, you said you'd help me. Now, I really think it'll work this time. One last try. Take it home, run some tests on it. Uh, you can leave it here, I, I don't mind. No, I built it in the junk shop. And that's where it belongs. <laughs> Come on, Harry. <laughs> the long face. I told you that computer stuff was all out of date. Why do you think I let you have it? You know what they say. There's antiques, there's junk, and then... There's last year's computers. I know. It's not the equipment. It's the programming or something. Oh, hey, I got a present for you. Now that's worth something. See the names on that? That's the pennant-winning Jets team from when I was a boy. Found it in a box of old garden tools. Some people just don't know what they've got. Don't you like it? 
Thanks, Ted. Mm. I'll call you down when supper's ready. Time trap. Tell you what I think. Someone's got there before you. No other way to explain my life. I mean, it doesn't seem two minutes since I was a boy myself. And now look at me. What happened to those years? It's like someone threw a switch. Theory checks out. I've gone over the calculations. Over and over. It should work. What am I doing wrong? Well, I'm no scientist, but I got a pretty good idea. A bit less theory, a bit more practice. What do you mean? Well, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's great what you're doing. It's just there's more to life than books and theories. That's all. Like what? Oh, swimming, surfing. Playing baseball. Exactly. I mean, with a right arm like yours, you were born to be a pitcher. You're a natural. Look, Ted, what I'm trying to do is not boring. It's exciting. Time travel essentially the greatest discovery the world has ever known. How can you call that boring? Well, sure, if it worked. What do you mean, if it worked? I remember when I was about 13, my dad took me to one side and he said... Yeah, you told me. And I'm telling you again, because you obviously haven't got the message yet. He said, son, they don't teach fish to swim. You know what he meant by that? Yes. He meant... If you're a natural at something, you should go do it. Customer? <laughs> Can I help you? Uh, just looking, thanks. You got some fine looking pieces here. Thanks. Not everyone appreciates a fine antique when they see one. Are you uh, in the trade, Mr. Uh... Well, sir. Donald Wells. Alan Morgan. Pleased to meet you. No, I'm uh, just in town for a couple of days visiting. Visiting family? That's right. I knew it. Oh? I knew you had to come from around here. Your face is so familiar. But the name, Wells. Alberton's a pretty small town. I'm sure I'd remember. Well, it's just me and my dad. Well, we never did get out much. What's your dad's name? Well, look at that. That's a beauty. Well, that must be 20 years old. 30. It's not for sale, I'm afraid. It's my boy's. Really? A baseball player? Born to it. He's got a great right arm. He's a natural. Only he'd practice more, but you know, kids. I'm going upstairs. Yeah, well, um, <coughs> thanks a lot. Not at all. Any time. Bye. Mr. Wells. Maybe they're right. Maybe time travel is impossible. Think of it this way. If time travel is possible, then sooner or later someone's going to invent it. And the first thing they're going to do is come back to the present time and tell us about it. But since they haven't, then maybe it isn't. Possible, I mean. <sighs> The whole subject of time travel raises many interesting questions. If you could travel in time, which direction would you go in? For it's an uncertain future where, for all you know, the world might not even exist? Or back into the past, about which we know everything, all think we do. You might be tempted to go back and do things differently. touch anything. Well, I don't get it. They went to all the trouble of breaking in here and they didn't take anything? 
I didn't say that. I said they didn't take any money, just goods. There's a lamp missing, and an oil painting, original mind, and a little statuette It sat here. Do you remember it, David? A horse rearing up on its back legs. Exquisite thing. <sighs> Worth a bundle. I'd only just got it. You say the till was unlocked. Let me see. I never lock it. Why not? Oh, come on, Pat. It's loose change. The big money I keep in the safe. And they didn't touch that. Well, they wouldn't have had time. Even so, not emptying the till suggests they weren't after money. He wasn't. Pardon me? He. One man? It had to be one man. Now, David, you don't know that. No, no, no. Let him speak. Go ahead, David. Going by what was taken, two guys would have taken more. Also, there's not much room to move around in here. Yet he got in and out without disturbing anything. Just took what he wanted and ran. Quite a detective, your boy. Next thing you'll be telling me he's got a suspect. I have. He's got it in his head it was the stranger. Stranger? This evening, as I was locking up, said his name was Donald Wells. And what was your reason for suspecting him? He looked the type. That's good enough for me. He had a kind face, actually, full of character. He was very interested in the antiques, though, so it's possible. What did he look like? He was about your age, balding, overweight, <laughs> bit of a mess, really. Anything else you can tell me about him? Not really. Oh, said he was visiting family. No! Dad! What is it? The Tasmo. It's gone. The what? Nice place. Very authentic. I used to eat in a place like this when I was young. Excuse me, sir. Is your name Donald Wells? That's me. Lieutenant O'Neill, Albert and Police. This is Sergeant Watson. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. Pull up a chair. Uh, oh, I see. I'm, I'm to go with you. If you don't mind. It's just a routine inquiry. That's OK. I was kind of expecting you anyway. I'll be back. Keep it cold for me, would you? Sure. You say you're here on business, Mr. Wells. Kind of. Kind of. Alan Morgan seemed to think you were here visiting your family. That too. So you're kind of here on business, and you're kind of here visiting your family at the same time? Yes. What is the nature of your business, exactly? I'm, uh, an historian. I see. And that's what drew you to Mr. Morgan's antique shop last evening, was it? Yes. See anything you liked? Not enough to make me want to steal it. When I picked you up just now, you said you were expecting me. What did you mean by that? It's a figure of speech. Now, I'm a stranger in town. I figured you might want to check me out. So you immediately assumed that I would suspect you of being a thief. Why? Does that happen wherever you go? Can I ask you something? What is this? I carry that with me all the time. It's my sort of ID card. I'd like to hold on to this for a while, if you don't mind. I do mind. Are you arresting me? No, not at all. You're free to go. But I have to tell you, Mr. Wells, your story doesn't add up. Not by a long chalk. You can pick that up when I've had it checked out. It's not 
not fair. Of all the junk he could have taken, why pick up the Tesmo? It's no use to anyone but me. See that police sergeant who wrote down what was missing? I didn't even put the Tesmo on the list. No one would understand what that means. Never mind about the greatest scientific discovery of the century. He's out looking for a lampshade, a crummy picture, and a horse statuette. What does my dad care? No one believes in me, Harry. Not even my own dad. All he can ever talk about is baseball. Oh, I hate it. I don't care. I hate it. Ah! Harry, quick! <whistles> David, wait! Your dad was right. Make a great pitcher. How did you know my name? Uh, they told me down at the station. Lieutenant O'Neill took me in for questioning. But listen, it wasn't me. I just want you to know that. Do you believe me? <laughs> oh, nice dog. What did you say you call him? Harry? Nice boy. Good Harry. <laughs> It's some sort of plastic, or metal, I don't know what it is. It's got a barcode sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, we've been trying. So you've never seen anything like that before, huh? Okay. Thanks, Charlie. Neither have I. Wow. What? What a coincidence. I got one like this at home, just exactly like this. One of my most prized possessions, actually. <laughs> you don't look much like a baseball player. Player? No. Fan, yes. One of the things I've learned as I've gotten older. Sports are great because you don't have to think about it. Always been my problem, thinking too much. How about you? <sighs> I'd better be getting home. Sure. A nice talking to you. Come on, boy. David, I don't want to pry, but there's something bothering you. you. You seem depressed. We've just been burgled. Yeah, I know, but something else. Something between you and your father. But I couldn't help noticing what happened back there in the shop. You know, sometimes talking to a stranger can be a great help. You're wasting your time with that. He's just trying to make fools of us. You want me to bring him in? That's okay. I'll deal with our Mr. Wells myself. Give me that. First of March, 2035. My name is David Morgan. Serial number 1-89079. Five, five, five. I have brown hair and hazel eyes. I also have a distinguishing scar on my right hand where I cut myself when I was a teenager. Who'd he say it was? David Morgan. There you go. Thank you. They don't make them like that anymore. Have you eaten at every diner in the country? I don't think so. Why? You look like you have. So, you were saying about your dad? He loves baseball. Yeah, I gather that. He played professionally for a while, but didn't work out. I get it. And now he wants you to play, so you can live out his dream. But you have a dream of your own, and he can't see that. Couldn't have put it better myself. So she'd leave me alone. Nobody's perfect. You give him a hard time, too. What do you mean? You upset him a lot. I don't. Yes, you do. Talking about the junk shop, it's an antique shop. How do you know what I call it? Anyway, it is junk. Well, to you and me, it's junk, but to him, they're antiques. The thing you can understand about a man like your father is he's got his pride. And he may not show it, but these things hurt him a lot. 
Anyway, tell me about the Tasma. You'll only laugh. I won't, I promise. It's a time machine. I thought time travel was impossible. It's not impossible. Even Einstein said it could work in theory. And you figured it out? Yeah. Well, I think I have. Just needs a few adjustments. A little work, believe me. How do you know? You haven't even seen it. I, uh... I have faith in you, that's all. More than my dad has. Listen, it'll work. Believe me. It'll work. Believe me. How do you know? Because I've tried it. And? It sent me into the future. <laughs> Only for about a minute. David had gone to the bathroom, and he never knew what had happened. And the machine didn't work for him? How could it? Without this. Good girl. Plug it in. I want to see this for myself. Eamon. What are you waiting for? Plug it in. Tell me you love me. Alice. Please. Look at you. You're shaking. What's the matter with you? None of this comes easily to me, you know. David Morgan, he... He's the most brilliant student that I've ever taught. In fact, when it comes to mathematics, he's the one who's teaching me. It hurts me to betray him like this. Of course it does. How do you think I feel, skulking around in alleyways, breaking into shops in the middle of the night? But I do it, and do you know why? for us, so that we can be together, so that we can finally get out of this dead-end job in this dead-end town. I know it's rough on the boy, but he'll get over it. He'll have many chances. We only have one, and we've got to take it. I love you, Alice, and I can't wait to make you Mrs. Eamon Dodds. <gasps> What is it? I figured he'd be back. What does he want? They never did like strangers much in this town. Now listen, it isn't hard to figure out who stole the Tasmo. You said yourself that those antiques are just junk. That means that the thief wanted your invention. He just stole that other stuff just to put us off the scent. Just ask yourself, where do people put their junk? Gotta go. Wait. Donald Wells was a stranger, not so much from out of town as out of time. He traveled here from the year 2035 on a very important mission. That he and young David should hit it off is not so surprising, given that they were the one and same person. Donald Wells was really David Morgan, grown into a middle-aged man. His one aim was to help his younger self through this crisis. At least that had been his one aim. And he set out. Hello again. Mr. Wells, is Lieutenant O'Neill looking for you? Yeah, we met this morning. You know, I've been pulled in for questioning about your burglary. Next thing I'll be having to explain some parking violation from two years back. Well, you don't need to worry. I won't hand you in. Thank you. You know, I've uh, just been talking to your son. He's a fine boy. Hmm. A scientist, I gather. He's got some very interesting ideas. And some very stupid ones. He obviously thinks the world of you. He's very proud of you and all you've achieved. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it. Always the same with kids, though. Sometimes they find it easier to open up to a stranger. You know, he told me that he finds it difficult to talk to you sometimes. Something about your love of baseball? Oh, he's a natural. I keep telling him. Well, baseball's a great game, but I don't know. That's a career. It's not about getting a career. It's about getting a life. When I was his age, I was out there all day long playing sports, enjoying myself. I don't think he's even got any friends. That's not true. I mean, well, you can't be sure. 
I think I know my own son, Mr. Wells. And I think he should forget about all this boring science stuff. You should be proud of him. You know, what he's trying to do isn't boring, it's exciting. Time travel. Potentially the greatest discovery in the history of the world. How can you say that's boring? Well, sure, if it worked. What do you mean, if it worked? I remember when I was about 13, my dad took me to one side and said, they don't teach fish to swim. Yeah, I know, but David isn't a fish, Mr. Morgan. He's a scientist. He's a genius. He's... How did you know what my dad used to say? I mean... <laughs> isn't that what all fathers say to their sons? I better go. Where do people put their rubbish? In the rubbish bins. So what? So if I find the junk, I find the thief. Well, that's great, except I don't know where to look. Mm. The only people who know about the Tasman are me, my dad, and Miss Jim. Miss Jamison, I mean. It's Dodds. The headmaster? He's got her eaten out of his hand. Who are you? How do you know so much? About me? About the Tasmo? You're from the future, aren't you? You've been sent here to help me to find the Tasmo. Because without it... Time travel is impossible? <sighs> then it works. I told you. Where? I mean, when are you from? 2035. And, and do I... I mean, am I around then? Yeah. And do you know me in the future? Better than anyone. Wow. It's a complicated business. We're refining it all the time, but... we still can't stay in the same time frame indefinitely. This time window that I've opened has to close soon. 12 noon, the day after tomorrow. You have to get the Tasmo back before it does. And how do I do that? Follow your lead. I'm not allowed to interfere, but I'll be around. It works. <laughs> Where did you find them? They just turned up. I can see that, David. I said, where? In the park. In the park? Yeah. When I took Harry for his walk this morning, <coughs> he sniffed them out. Didn't you, Harry? <coughs> Quite an amazing coincidence. I'm gonna be late for school. Just a minute. There's something going on here. You're not leaving till you tell me the truth. You don't want to know. Yes, I do. Who is this Wells character, and how come he knows so much about us? You'd never believe it, because you think someone broke this place for that. They didn't. They wanted my invention, and now I'm going to have to go and get it without your help, because it's a little bit more valuable than this... this... Go on, say it, junk. <laughs> Alan Morgan, what did you find out about this Wells character? First of March, 2035. My name is David Morgan. Serial number 1-89007-555. I have brown hair and hazel eyes. I also have a distinguishing scar on my right hand where I cut myself when I was a teenager. What do you make of it? First, his name is Donald Wells. 
Now he's David Morgan. That's your boy's name. Uh, yeah, that's strange. Still, as you said yourself, we can't prove anything against him. I mean, technically, he's done nothing wrong, has he? Not yet. But we're watching him. Sooner or later, he's going to make a mistake. And when he does... Thought I'd find you here. Mr. Morgan. Please, call me Alan. Just don't call me Dad, OK? I don't think I can handle that yet. How did you find out? You more or less told me yourself. <laughs> Look at you. A grown man still trying to convince me about science. Well, I'm convinced. I, uh, I didn't want to believe it, but I uh, checked with O'Neill. He showed me that ID card of yours. Stupid. You know, we got a lot of strict rules about what we can bring on trips like this. I came up with most of them. Dropping the future into the past, like dropping pebbles in a lake, makes waves. What did O'Neill say? Uh, you're lucky. Pat's not smart enough to work this one out. He's confused, that's all. And David, have you talked to him? I don't think he realizes who you are. Good. So what happens now? He gets the Tasmo back. Either that or... Or what? If he fails, and the Tasmo falls into the wrong hands, then the course of history's changed, and the world I come from ceases to exist. But surely, if, if that had happened, you and I couldn't be having this conversation now, could we? Maybe we won't, in the future. It's a complicated business. You must think me a fool. Why? Well, you were right about everything. Your theories, your calculation. I'm sorry. I mean, Alan. Go ahead. Finish your ice cream. David. Uh, David. How are you? I heard about the burglary. Did you, uh, did you actually get a chance to see the burglar? No. Oh, what a shame. Did you lose much? I lost everything. The Tasmo's gone. Oh, David, uh, I had no idea. It's all right, though. It's got a built-in homing device. A, a what? Yeah. After a day or two, it dematerializes and returns to the shop. It might even be back there by now. Oh, what? That's a relief. What are you doing there, boy? You should be in class by now. He knows. I'm sure he knows. You worry too much. Everything's working out according to plan. Try to relax. Relax? It's easy for you to say. You don't know David. He absolutely loves science. Everyone has their hobbies. I love money. Now listen, I've been making some discreet inquiries and I think I've found a buyer. Japanese. A man of real vision. Well, that is good because we've got to get it off the premises right away. No. He can't pick it up just yet. We leave it where it is. Oh, Emma, no. Alice, stop and think. <gasps> we can't move the Tasmo. Where are we going to put it? In my house? In yours? And incriminate ourselves even further? No. We keep it here where it's safe. Besides, I'm absolutely sure. Listen to me. I'm positive that David suspects nothing. At this point, it seemed to David that he had one chance and one chance only. He would have to take back what had been stolen from him, even if it meant breaking into the school. After all, he reasoned it really isn't theft 
to take something which belongs to you in the first place. Still, he would need help. And who better to turn to than the man who always seemed to know what the future held? We're in luck. It's open. Shh. Do you want to wake the whole neighborhood up? Sorry. Come on. The storeroom's just up this corridor. You didn't seem to know your way around my school. How come? Well, I was extremely well briefed before I came on this mission. You mean you were briefed by me? Uh, in a way. I can't believe you know not a version of me. What am I like? What did I grow up to become? Rich and famous. Now, can we get on no, with no, this? No, I mean physically. What do I look like? Am I tall and good looking? You have an interesting face. Interesting? You mean I'm ugly? Look, can we get on with this, please? What is it? Nothing. Uh, it's just some of my calculations. Yeah, I know. You made a very simple mistake. It held you up about five years. I forgot. It's not allowed. How come you know so much? I can't explain. No time. I'll kneel the station. There's an intruder inside the school. Is there anybody awake back there? I'm pretty sure Lieutenant O'Neill will be here soon. Take the Tasmo, escape with it. Don't worry about me. Baseball, just like mine. We like the same flavor ice cream. David. You understand me and what my dad's like. David. You didn't get there from some briefing. You weren't supposed to find out. You're not me. You can't be me. You're so... Old and fat. I know. It's what happens to people. It's called aging. No. Please. Look, we can talk about this later. Take the Tasmo, quickly. You're not my future. David, wait. You're not my future! Absolutely sure, officer. I'm telling you, Mr. Dodds, he had nothing on him. Why, is there something missing? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think so, but you told me yourself the man's a burglar. I knew it all along. And now I got all the proof I need. Well, good night, sir. Good night. Wells had got to the Tasmo just in time and managed to hide it. But where? It could only be a matter of time before Dodds or Miss Jameson found it. Either way, it made no difference to David Morgan, because David had come to a decision. He was about to change the course of history. David, can you get your own breakfast? I gotta open the shop. I'm going for a run first. A run? What's gotten into you? Nothing. What happened to your hand? It's just a little cut. Do you want something else? Yes. C can you stop still for a minute? <sighs> I wanted to apologize. What for? Well, for not believing in your abilities, your time machine. I'm sorry. No, I should be the one who's sorry. You were right all along. Where's Einstein? That's all over with. I'm taking your advice, Dad. I'm going to be a baseball player, a professional. 
I'm gonna make you proud of me. I'm gonna get some answers. If we have to wait here all week. Boy, well, I don't think it's gonna take that long, Lieutenant O'Neill. In about an hour, I'll be leaving. Then you won't hear or see me ever again. Leaving. In an hour. You've got no chance, Wells. Oh, just one thing. Uh, I'd like to get a message to David. Would that be possible? Well, that all depends. On whether you start telling the truth. Doesn't it? Take this home. It's really important, Harry. Really important. Homeboy. Home. Get that dog out of here. This is a police station, not a home for strays. All that anyone needs to know is that it was Miss Jamison who did most of the work on it. She was just kind enough to let you share in her ideas, to help her as any good assistant would. She was the brains boy, and technically the Tasmo belongs to her, not you. Fine, keep it. Don't mess with me. What? It's yours. Do what you want with it. Well, now you're talking sensibly. Where is it? What do you mean, where is it? I thought you had it. Harry? What you doing here, boy, eh? Where's David? Stay out of this. I know this boy, Eamon. If he says that he doesn't have the Tasmo, then he doesn't have it. Well, I can soon make him start telling the truth. No, you said that no one would get hurt. You said... Well, I haven't laid a finger on him, have I? No, but... Then stop writing! I don't have time for this! <gasps> Alice. Alice. <gasps> Alice. My darling. Can't you see what's happened? The, the truth about this discovery has leaked out. Wells must be working for some foreign government. There'll be hundreds more like him on their way. We have to get the Tasmo and get out of here. Shh. What's that? Where's my son? Mr. Morgan, isn't it? What a surprise. Don't get smart with me, Dodds. I want my son. Your son? Oh, you mean David. I, I'm afraid I don't understand. Why would you think that he would be here? David has been kidnapped by Dodds. He is being kept prisoner at the school. Hurry. We don't have much time. Donald... Wells. Very well. I see we understand each other, Mr. Morgan. 
I want the Tasmo, you want your son. Find out where Wells has hidden the Tasmo, and I'll tell you where we've hidden David. You will tell me where David is right now, or I'm going to the police. Oh, I don't think you're going to do that. Not if you want to see David alive again, that is. Total dirtbag! Where is he? Jamison, so... David, where is he? Oh, of course. He's, he's over here. David, are you okay? Uh, uh, yeah. Glad to see you, though. You wanted the Tasmo. I would have given it to him, you know, Dad. I just didn't know where it was. You would have given him the Tasmo? Why, David, it's, it, it's your life's work, your future. Swimming, surfing, baseball. Oh, David, I was wrong. I tried to tell you this morning. You don't let anyone tell you how to live your life, not even me. I was wrong about all of it. Well, except for one thing. You are a natural, a natural scientist. I've been a fool, but the truth is, I couldn't be prouder of you if you never pitched a baseball in your life. But how do you know where I was? Donald Wells. Told you who he was, didn't he? He's going back to his own time. At 12 noon, today. We could just about make it. This is your statement. Something wrong with it? No, nothing. We often have time travelers passing through Alberton. Why, only last week I arrested Attila the Hun for speeding. Pat, can we speak to him? It's important. Be my guest. But you won't get any sense out of him. I got it. Good man. <laughs> Police? Uh, my name is Alice Jameson. I'd like to report a crime. Thank you. You must have known all this was going to happen. Well, I didn't have the full story, but I know it was going to turn out all right. There's so many things I want to ask you. I know. I wish I could help. Is there anything you can tell us? Like, where do you live now? Well, I live here, of course. Except it's not called Alverton anymore. What's it called? Morganville. It's a bit embarrassing, really. Morgan. <laughs> You're gonna have a good life, David. Mostly. I think I'm going now. What about the mistake I made in my calculations? It can't give me a clue. Goodbye, David. I won't be far away. You better have a look at this, boss. Came in a short time ago. A Miss Jameson called from the school. She said there'd been some trouble. Again? Well, what are we waiting for? You'll have to leave. I'm... You want to explain it to him, or shall I? It all got straightened out eventually. Jameson had redeemed herself in David's eyes, and she went on to assist him in his experiments, and we all know how they turned out. David dropped the charges against Damon Dodds on condition that he take a vacation, a long vacation, a permanent vacation. As for Donald Wells, David never did explain it to the police or anyone else, except to say he was just passing through, taking a trip down memory lane, so to speak. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome, Alice. Piece of junk. Now, now, David, try it again. What's the problem? I can certainly travel one minute into the future. 
What's the point of that? Well, that is a remarkable achievement, and you know you're gonna get better. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes.